Are you looking to start or expand your international business? Then with us, you're in the right place. We support your internationalization process from start to finish, based on your specific needs. With our Go Global cockpit, you can analyze and discover markets and receive information on customs tariffs in over 150 countries. And our country experts are ready to discuss your next export project without commitment. Grüezi miteinander and welcome to today's webinar about Nusantara, the new capital city of Indonesia. Happy to have you all here in this call. My name is Philip Morgan and I'm the director for industrial programs at Switzerland Global Enterprise and I will be the host for you this, for this webinar today. How often does it happen that a country is planning and realizing an entirely new capital city? Certainly not every day. Jakarta, the current capital city of Indonesia, faces many challenges. Every year, parts of the city are flooded. There is a constant risk of earthquakes due to its location on the Pacific Ring of Fire. And every day, the city's population continues to grow which leads to many traffic congestions. Indonesia has therefore decided to develop Nusantara as a completely new city. A great opportunity for Indonesia as the new city is to be built completely sustainably. However, this is also a great opportunity for Swiss companies because Switzerland has countless technologies that can make a contribution to a sustainable construction and also operation of the new city of Nusantara. Many interested companies in this project are here today. So let's listen to what our experts have to tell you about Nusantara. But let's give now an overview on today's agenda. We are very honored to have two ambassadors in this call today. First, we will welcome Ambassador Svachaya, the Indonesian ambassador to Switzerland. Warmly welcome in this call. Afterwards, we will have Switzerland's ambassador to Indonesia, Oliver Zehnder, who will give us his welcoming remarks. Also a warm welcome to Mr. Zehnder. Then we want to know more about the new capital city. Dr. Agung Vicaksono will share with us the current status of the development. We then continue with Jennifer Halim. She's sharing with us how Nusantara can become your option as a Swiss company to enter the Indonesian market. And last but not least, we also have Matthias Niefele from the Singapore ETH Future Cities Lab in the call. They developed something very interesting, which might be of help for you. So get excited. Let me also say a few words about Switzerland Global Enterprise, your host today. We are the official Swiss export and investment promotion agency. We support Swiss SMEs in their international business and we help innovative foreign companies in settling in Switzerland. Together with the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, we currently operate offices in 31 countries. Among them, also our Swiss business hub in Jakarta, where we have a dedicated person, Margaret Pohan, who helps Swiss SMEs in connecting them with local large infrastructure projects such as Nusantara. Together with the team Switzerland Infrastructure, where you can see the members on the slide now, we are identifying in our focus markets the most promising infrastructure projects such as, for example, Nusantara, where we see that Swiss solutions could contribute. Our partners, the Swiss business associations, they help us then identifying the right Swiss suppliers, such as your company, for those projects, and we will connect you with the right people on the ground. But enough from my side. Now let's start. Mr. Ambassador Svachaya, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Roger, Mor Morger, uh, Philip Morger. <clears throat> Herzlich willkommen to this uh, uh, webinar. And 
my good friend, Ambassador Olive Sender, Pak Agung Wicaksono, Deputy Head of IKN Authority, Jennifer Halim, Desan Sira, and Associates, Mr. Matthias Niffler, Singapore ETH Center, you yourself as a moderator, Mr. Rogers Binden, Swiss Business Hub, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, Swiss Business Associations, uh, and also Swiss industries uh, companies, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first to thank the Swiss Business Hub for organizing this important webinar on opportunities in Indonesia new capital city project. I wish also to extend our profound appreciations for the commitment of the Swiss companies and for their keen interest on the development of Indonesia's new capital project. The convening of this event and your keen participation are testament to the enduring collaboration and partnership between Indonesia and Switzerland. Both countries have solid legal basis to expand further their economic cooperation, particularly through the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, and hopefully soon to enter into force the Bilateral Investment uh, Treaty. Our bilateral cooperation is multifaceted, encompassing economic, political, and socio-cultural dimensions. Annually, as we are going to also organize this coming April, we are conducting Joint Economic Commission meeting participated also by the private sectors to discuss ways and means to enhance further our economic cooperation. Our annual political dialogue is equally essential to discuss wide ranges of issues of common interest. After the entry into force of Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, we have witnessed trend of increase in our bilateral trade and investment and it also offers a significant potential to be further tapped and utilized by private sectors from both countries. Hopefully, if the ratification process of the new generation of bilateral investment treaty in both countries is completed, it will boast further confidence for further investment, including also by small and medium sized enterprises from Switzerland to Indonesia. Swiss companies have made substantial investment contribution in Indonesia with over 100 companies establishing their presence across various sectors, utilizing Indonesia's growing potential as a market, both at national as well as at the regional levels. Swiss investments underscore confidence in Indonesia's potential including a strategic destination for their supply chains diversification in a wider region. Swiss investment covers various sectors, including on industries and manufacturing. We keenly uh, certainly uh, would like to invite investment on other sectors, which is uh, also very potential, such as energy transition, green infrastructure, sustainability, digital economy, and healthcare, just to mention only some of them. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, on the new capital, this is a significant transformation, and Nusantara is projected to be a pilot city that embraces innovation, technology, sustainability, and inclusivity, where private participation should also be essential part. Nusantara embodies our vision of a resilient and prosperous Indonesia built on the principle of social justice, equality, environmental sustainability, and also economic resilience. Nusantara is a concrete realization of the impending relocation of Indonesia's new, new capital, inspired by Indonesia's first president, the founding father of the country. To locate the new capital Nusantara in Kalimantan signifies 
a monumental as well as strategic leap toward realizing our national set vision on sustainable development and prosperous prosperity to all of the people throughout Indonesia. Nusantara is also envisioned as a green smart city, hold immense promises as a competitive business hub with a sub-focus on innovation and technology. Nusantara from the Indonesian Ministry of National Development Planning is expected to attract around 34 billion US dollar investment, including also by the private sectors over the next decade. It is developed as a model of a modern, green and smart city of the 21st century. This is also a strategic move to reduce pressure, as what you mentioned earlier, to uh, Jakarta issues of overpopulation, traffic congestion, as well as environmental challenges. It is strategically aspired to decentralize economic activities and promote balanced regional growth across the archipelago. Switzerland distinction as the most innovative country, as evident by its consistent ranking in the Global Innovation Index, certain years in a row, is an ideal partner to achieve the goal of Nusantara. Switzerland expertise and best practices to develop its sustainable, green and smart city throughout the country with different sizes could also serve as a model. Potential are available from renewable energy, green infrastructure, smart mobility, sustainable water to waste management, healthy living environment, and also education infrastructure. Therefore, I certainly wish to commend this initiative in bringing the Swiss company to learn more about Nusantara and especially from the presentation of Pa Agung. Hopefully this will develop a better understanding on the concrete step and the status, the current status of the realization of the new capital development. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, this is certainly a historic step and a transformation where we would like to have the Swiss companies as part of it, as the two countries have long-standing commitment to enhance further our bilateral partnership to a higher plane for mutual benefits. Here in Switzerland, I certainly have witnessed different model of sustainable and smart cities in different sizes. Of course, I do not mean that Nusantara will be exactly like those, but certainly these cities serve and also uh, provide a good model and the Swiss companies experience that has participated in the development of those cities could also bring lesson learned and best practices to help materializing the historic and transformative ideals of Nusantara as Indonesia's new capital. Finally, I just would like to quote uh, President Joko Widodo is saying, quote, the relocation of the capital city to Nusantara represents a historic opportunity to transform Indonesia into a more advanced and sustainable nation. Nusantara will not just be a new administrative center, but a symbol of our commitment to equitable development and environmental stewardship. So I wish you all a best uh, uh, opportunity to have a discussion and also to know more as well as to hear your uh, commitment to come and also part of this historical uh, part of our journey into the Indone golden era of Indonesia by 2045. I wish to thank you for the opportunity and I wish you all of for having a very good uh, discussion ahead of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. We're very honored that you joined the webinar today and you already shared 
with us some of the goals uh, for Nusantara and what is important uh, to Indonesia, how the city will be developed. And we would be more than happy to see if we can share with you the experiences Swiss companies gained here in Switzerland with the requirements which we have here for, as you mentioned, smart cities, for example, that we can share those experience with Indonesia and help uh, creating this uh, wonderful project. Thank you very much for joining us. Now I would like to give the virtual microphone from Bern to Indonesia and give the word to Mr. Ambassador Zehnder, the ambassador uh, for Switzerland in Indonesia. Please, Mr. Zehnder. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a great pleasure to see these familiar faces, uh, even if it's only virtually. And uh, just to start, uh, uh, well, let's not exaggerate. Uh, uh, Jakarta is a very livable city. And uh, right now we have a blue sky and sometimes you have uh, uh, rain and uh, and traffic, uh, machete, as they say here, but it's uh, we manage always to, to get over it. So it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a great pleasure to be with you, uh, and uh, I will not repeat what Pangura just said. I think he very well resumed uh, the, the, the excellent cooperation between Switzerland and Indonesia, which has been going on for, for, for more than 70 years. And for me, it's a great privilege to be here in, in, in Indonesia at this juncture of uh, its economic and, uh, and social development. I don't know, for some reason, I like new cities. I, my first posting was in Brasilia, so it was interesting to see the vision of a country in the 1960s. And recently I was posted in, in Shanghai, uh, so the vision of China in the early 21st century. And I'm very much looking forward to, to see what, what uh, Indonesia is going to do. And I'm very confident um, that they will achieve what they have uh, uh, said. Um, I was in Nusantara last January. Uh, well, I won't give you a description. It was still very in the development phase, but uh, I hope to be to go there uh, uh, soon and uh, at least for its inauguration at the latest on the 70th of, uh, of August. Um, I think we, we don't get often, you, you've mentioned that we don't get often the opportunity to, to, to participate or to witness the development of a new city. And uh, I think it is a, 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 an opportunity to learn, but it is also an opportunity to offer our, our technologies and, and Switzerland has much, much to offer. I, I saw that, especially when I was in Shanghai, because there are a lot of companies producing there, but we have a lot of know-how uh, in, in, in different areas. We have, we have champions in, in niche sectors, but of course we talk about green buildings, sustainable buildings, there we have we have knowledge. We have also smart mobility. Um, I mean, you can just you go out of your office at, in, in Zurich and you you see what uh, what the city has achieved in in smart mobility. We talk also a lot about resource management and the importance of water. It is an, uh, an, an area where we never enough uh, uh, insist on on how important the access to clean water is, and we, so we have expertise. And uh, of course, we also have uh, um, knowledge in terms of, of, of education. So, but I could go on and on and on. There are so so many areas where we uh, can be active and where we can uh, uh, provide our services and, and learn from our Indonesian partners. So, uh, I wish uh, I will. I welcome this the holding of this seminar. I look forward to having a, a group of companies visiting Nusantara. Uh, soon, and I hope I can accompany you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador Zehnder, and wonderful to see uh, the inspiration you brought from Indonesia now to us and the excitement about the new city uh, development. And as you already mentioned it uh, now, like there is in the planning that we might do a fact-finding mission with Swiss companies to Nusantara later this year. I will tell a little bit more later in the call, but thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for joining us and your um, welcoming words. But now I would like to give back the word to uh, Mr. Agun Vichatsono um, and to, to restart your presentation, give us the 
overall view about uh, Nusantara, please. Okay, so my time at the University of St. Cullen in Switzerland is a place where, you know, brought me also to this current position. I even heard that Ambassador Swajaya, uh, Mr. Ngura was uh, in St. Cullen, uh, the University of St. Cullen uh, a few uh, weeks ago. And I believe that's also what brought this connection between Indonesia and Switzerland. And as mentioned, Nusantara, the new capital in the island of Borneo, it's a symbol of a new transformation. But also in the next slide, we see that this is also a symbol. Yeah, in the next slide, uh, we see that Nusantara, uh, sorry, you, I think you move further. Uh, you see that Nusantara is basically a commitment to reforestation, not deforestation because out of 250,000 hectares of land will be 25% only uh, uh, established as urban area, but the 65% will remain as forest or even reforested to be tropical forest because many of those areas are, are a former production forest. And this is aimed at achieving a net zero emission by the year 2045, which is faster than the commitment of the Indonesian government to achieve it by 2060 for the whole country. So this is what makes Nusantara as uh, the smart, sustainable forest city as our vision. So in the next slide, uh, we also will see in the next chart that Nusantara will not be just a government area. Yes, it's going to be a, a capital city uh, like Bern, but it will also be an area that is designed to be a super economic hub. So here in the, in the map you see the core government area is the gray area there, number one. That is currently that we are constructing. But if you look at the whole map, then you see there are many other activities that is designed for the area. From financial center to tourism, renewable energy, education, uh, innovation and R&D, commodity and trade, up to agriculture and fishery. So this is where the investment opportunity lies for businesses because this will not be just a government capital. So if we look at the best example in the world of a, a government capital would probably be uh, the city of Washington DC or Bern or Canberra in Australia. But what we would like to build is something like Canberra or Bern at the core, at the gray area, surrounded by Dubai or Shenzhen or Singapore in the surrounding. Why I mentioned those? Because those are areas that built from scratch, but then later on becoming economic hub. So in the next slide, then we see how uh, and what sectors we're going to build in order to make this new capital city. So basically, it's the sectors required to make a city to be a livable and lovable city, to make a city to be a place to live, to work, to learn and to play. So ranging from housing to transportation, telecommunication, energy, waste management, like mentioned by Ambassador uh, Zender, water management up to industrial estate, which I will elaborate further. And, and in the next chart, we will see, and this is something in the next slide, something that I think Jennifer Halim has elaborated very well. So yes, uh, if you can be in touch with her, I think it will be excellent. Because this chart basically sums up what, what Jennifer Halim has described in her previous presentation on the incentives and the ease of doing business in getting into Nusantara. From tax holiday to land tenure to ease of the custom and duty, as well as exemption on some requirement for foreign workers. So this is what makes Nusantara as of now the most attractive investment destination in the country and perhaps in the region. So with that, I will go to the next slide uh, because this slide has been elaborated by Jennifer. Next slide is what I want to elaborate about the public-private partnership or the PPP scheme. So the previous slide, I think we go back one slide, show that there are two options, two schemes for the PPP. The left one speaks about PPP using user charge scheme. In user charge, there is going to be concession from the government to the private party, and then the private party will recoup the investment for the concession 
on the charge they give to the user. For example, in highway, in toll roads, where user will pay, and that is going to be the the source of income to cap to to cover the, the 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 investment. But in Nusantara, we also provide a PPP using a scheme called availability base or availability payment. Here you see the example how the company that will engage in a contract with the uh, Nusantara Capital Authority, the KPBU contract is basically a PPP contract, will be then guaranteed through a guarantee agreement with the Indonesian government by the Minister of Finance and by a company named IIGF, Indonesian Infrastructure Guarantee Fund. And this guarantee will ensure that there will be a scheme called availability payment, where the government through us, the Nusantara Capital Authority, will repay the investment that is being done by the company, both in terms of the capital expenditure, for example, in building apartment or housing, as well as the operational expenses to maintain the housing, for example, for the, for the 10 or 15 years time. So this is a scheme that is very risk free. In the next slide, I elaborate further how this scheme would be. So the SPV, the special purpose vehicle, for example, this is providing a housing service for the government offices as the tenant. Will then, will then receive availability payment from the Nusantara Capital Authority. And this is guaranteed through a guarantee agreement with Ministry of Finance and the IIGF. And the Ministry of Finance will provide the recourse agreement that also ensure that Nusantara has the availability to pay for the service. So basically here in the scheme, you see that the public party, we the government, retain the demand risk. Yeah, because certainly in the new city, you might not control the demand. Yeah. So demand is, and in fact, the government has allocated the budget for this availability payment to be 0.1 of our GDP will be allocated for IKN availability payment from year 2024 to 2029. And from 2030 onwards, even it will be increased to 0.15%. And this is sealed by government guarantee. So that is one scheme on PPP. The next slide will show the scheme, which is called the direct land allocation or land utilization. This is for a scheme for you who wants to go directly as private investors without government guarantee. We'll provide the land allocated to the project company. Project company will build, for example, hotel or, or build an apartment or shopping mall. And then the tenants will utilize that. And this will be a commercial agreement. And this is something which is, of course, when it comes to the risk, it is more risky because we don't cover the demand risk. But in terms of the process, this is a quicker process compared to the PPP process. Yeah, where we will, of course, do a lot of assessment on the feasibility study of the project that is being proposed. So in the next slide, we go to see in the next slide. We see that this scheme has already brought result. But by now, there are already five groundbreaking ceremonies led by the president being done by the domestic investors. So yes, Nusantara has been able to attract a lot of domestic investors right now. The total investment value is about 50 trillion rupiah. So it's about uh, 4 billion US dollar right now. And you see these are the logos of the companies involved in the groundbreaking ceremonies from uh, September last year until uh, just last February. In the next slide, we see that these domestic investors also has the foreign investment partner. So, for example, uh, in the electricity sector, uh, our state-owned company PLN has a Singaporean partner called Semcorp, who builds a 50 megawatt solar farm to supply renewable energy to the city. Marriott, as a hotel operator, 
has sealed an agreement with Pakuon Group, who is the largest or one of the largest property developer in Indonesia to operate the hotels of Marriott in Nusantara. Or even Swiss Hotel, and in fact Swiss Hotel, this probably will be the first hotel in Nusantara because Agung Sudayu Group, who is right now building the hotel, yeah, they will be operated by Swiss Hotel. And this is also a symbol of the first private investment going into Indonesia, uh, to Nusantara, and in fact, operated by a Swiss company. Also, a hospital uh, will be done by uh, Mayapada Group in collaboration with an Indian hospital called the Apollo. So as of now, we have attracted a lot of alloi, letter of interest, letter of intent, 156 letter of intents coming from various countries. Uh, the majority are the Asian countries, as you see here, Singapore, Japan, uh, China, uh, Korea, but also U.S. companies. Uh, uh, I was I was today with the, the Malaysian ambassador, so Malaysia is also uh, among the top, but we are also seeing increasing interest coming from European companies as well. And here you see on the uh, bottom right, those are the sectors right now that receive a lot of attention because of the PPP scheme that I explained earlier. The housing, the basic infrastructure, such as the construction of multi-utility tunnel, smart city infrastructure, as well as education. And with this education, here I'm showing a number of European, uh, uh, well, uh, UK and US school, but I'm attracting hopefully the attention later of uh, the Swiss education institution. In the next slide, we will see now, if you want to go with that, these are the eight steps. I will explain at the end that uh, submitting an LOI, just like the 156, 156 uh, companies we see in the previous slide, will be the way to go. After the LOI submission, we'll do a prioritization, we'll do a, the one-on-one -on -one meeting, and then it all goes to the step where we can get the land allocated for that, do a groundbreaking ceremony, and then uh, we, we do a deal closing that marks the successful completion of the investment in Nusantara. In the next slide, these are some of the examples of the sectors that have started the construction, not using the government budget, but using the private investment. So one school called the Nusantara International School, built by uh, a school operator named the Jakarta International School. Yeah, so it shows that you know we provided international education for the foreign businesses, for the foreign diplomats that will be relocated to Nusantara. But at the same time, we also revitalize, yeah, restructured the existing schools. For example, uh, the one uh, on the lower left, it's an existing public school that we're going to or we're on the process to revitalize. And uh, in the upcoming groundbreaking ceremony in May, we are in fact targeting that a number of education institution will also start construction, including a research facility that will house Stanford and potentially King's College London. And this is where I see the potential of Swiss education. I am a product of Swiss education myself after my PhD at St. Gallen University. And here we see uh, some example of a uh, technical institution that is very well renowned, uh, both at ETH, Zurich, somebody from ETH will speak after this, and APFL in Lausanne, and many Fachhochschule, you know, Polytechnic, uh, vocational education. And Switzerland has a very strong history of vocational education in Indonesia. In Bandung, the city where I studied at the Institute of Technology in Bandung, the Polytechnic in Bandung at that time was called Polytechnic Mechanic Swiss. Why? Because it was the Swiss that helped set up yeah, as a project of Swiss contact and supported by a lot of Swiss vocational education to create, give birth, and then grow this to be one of the most capable vocational education institution in Indonesia right now that we call Polman, Polytechnic Manufacturer in Bandung. So I'm inviting such an opportunity to also happen in Nusantara for Swiss education institution. In the next slide, we see 
the opportunity in the next slide is the opportunity that we see in the healthcare sector. There are as of now four hospital under construction ongoing, ranging from about 20% com uh, of completion right now to just starting. And this is also an opportunity for quality healthcare from Switzerland yeah, to also collaborate with this because the message from the very president is very clear. This hospital should be an international standard hospital. So I'm inviting the possibility again for Swiss investors in the healthcare sector to work with this hospital institution, which are all very well-known hospitals, the Mayapada Group, the Hermina Group, Abdi Waluyo, as well as the hospital built by the Ministry of Health. In the next slide, after education and healthcare, we see also the potential for mixed-use development for property. Agung Group. There you see the picture now already standing with almost 50% completion, and this will be the hotel operated by Swiss Hotel later. On the right, Pakuan Group in the ceremony that we will that they will work with Marriott Hotel, and also we are inviting Swiss investors to collaborate in developing mixed-use development in the real estate sector to build Nusantara. The next slide shows the opportunity in housing because housing is very important for our civil servant. Right now, we are already constructing, as of now, about 47 tower of housing for our civil servants. And here is the progress. You see the picture. The lower picture shows the artist's impression. The above picture shows the progress. So it ranging on about 30 to 35 percent of the completion. And we are inviting again potential investors from Switzerland to contribute also in building the infrastructure, the housing infrastructure, especially through the public private partnership scheme, as I mentioned, with the government guarantee. In the next chart is another sector, is the transportation. So we have committed Santara to be a green city. The transportation will be using electric vehicle fully. And a bus, a bus company and taxi company named Bluebird already committed to provide electric taxi and electric bus. And this is an opportunity also for electric vehicles such as trolley bus from Switzerland yeah, that can be a potential solution working with these bus operators such as Bluebird or Damri in Indonesia that can create an integrated electrical public transport in Nusantara. Next chart. So here are some pictures. If you want to know the details, I'm not going to speak in detail about the progress of each of every project, the palace, the office, because I think in the next uh, page we can go. Yeah, this is the palace uh, progress. In the next page, we will see the progress of the ministry's offices. Yeah, so about 60% completion, 50% completion. Yeah. And then next page is the, the townhouse for the ministers. It's already uh, available as of now, and even two out, out of the about 40 uh, houses standing ready to be uh, occupied. Uh, some of the ministers will start moving in in July, yeah, because in August we'll have the uh, independence ceremony. And uh, that's why uh, in the next slide, yeah, and this is also the progress of construction on the ground. My dear uh, colleagues, friends, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, there is a saying that seeing is believing. What I can show you right now are pictures and videos. But the best way to observe Nusantara and the best way for you to start investing is by visiting Nusantara itself. And that's why I'm inviting you to visit Nusantara as early as possible. I think the next summer will be the best opportunity. Yeah, maybe April. Yeah, well, April is still uh, the springtime, but it could be a good opportunity to visit up to June and July, because by August, this city will start to be occupied for the Independence Day ceremony and then also by the civil servants that will start coming in September. So
So with that, in the next page, yeah, and that is the final stage is the guidelines for you to address and send the letter of intent to us by explaining the company profile, the overview of your plan, the location and the required land uh, you will need, as well as the indication of the amount of investment, as well as the technology to be sent to my boss, to the chairman of the Nusantara Capital Authority with a copy to myself. Yeah, and with this, I hope that we will make Nusantara happen with the support of the Swiss investors. As then in the final slide, the next slide, as we always say, there are people who make things happen, but there are others who just watch things happen while others wonder what has happened. Ich glaube, dass sie alle hier um Nusantara zu machen. Also vielen Dank, guten Morgen, Wiedersehen in Nusantara. Thank, thank you very much, um, Mr. Vichaksono, um, also for your kind words, even in German, um, highly appreciated and happy to see um, this, uh, some examples of Swiss technology, which you already included in your presentation. And um, thanks also for the invitation spoken uh, to us to visit Nusantara. As already quickly mentioned before, we are actually planning a fact-finding mission to Nusantara, probably end of August, um, early September. So to all the Swiss companies who would be interested, um, you can give us a note afterwards by email or now in the chat. So feel free to do that if you would be interested in participating in such a fact find. Uh, Jennifer Halim, um, because she can tell a little bit more how Nusantara can be for a Swiss company the point of a market entry in Indonesia. Please, Ms. Halim. All right, thank you very much, Felix, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Agung, for the short uh, presentation given despite the trouble uh, in the connection, but uh, it's very insightful to receive uh, a few uh, insights. So, a uh, distinguished audience, um, the Honorable uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, Ikedeng Muraswa Jaya, Indonesian Ambassador to Switzerland, the Honorable Mr. Ambassador Olivier Zinder, uh, Switzerland Ambassador to Indonesia, Timor Leste, and ASEAN. Dr. Agung Wichaksono, as well as the ICANN um, or Nusantara Deputy for Funding and Investment, uh, Matthias from uh, ETH uh, Alliance, as well as my dearest friends, uh, Mr. Roger Spinden and Ibu Meiki Duver from uh, the Swiss Hub in Indonesia. Um, it's very honored uh, to be part of this uh, webinar and this presentation to deliver um, information and insights about the exciting plan of the government of Indonesia in relocating the new capital, the capital city from Jakarta to uh, the Nusantara. So exactly uh, one month ago, I received a call from Ibu Mega, Abu, Ibu Megi, uh, and heard the news about the plan to organize about the webinar uh, to provide some updates about Indonesia's new capital city project, especially after the election, um, which has just been happening on the, uh, February uh, 14th. Uh, it's great to uh, share uh, some insights and to be participate as well in this webinar uh, to deliver uh, about doing business in Nusantara as well as some incentives provided. Um, both for the fiscal and non-fiscal uh, incentives uh, through the issuance of the government regulation number 12, uh, 2023. So um, I was very thrilled uh, to be here, uh, Dr. Agung specifically, to also like hearing some updates and as current status of uh, the Nusantara and also like to share with our clients and also uh, prospective clients as partners uh, from overseas uh, to also work together uh, with the ICN or the Nusantara uh, Authority of Nusantara to promote the doing business in Nusantara and about like the fiscal and non-fiscal incentives that would be eligible for uh, businesses. If I could uh, briefly introduce about uh, our firm and what we do. 
We are uh, Desanchuan Associates. We were founded uh, back then in 1992 in Sinchen and Hong Kong. It's been over then 30 years that we operate as a privately owned group company. And we have a few operations globally where our focus is to support a foreign business to tap into Asia. And uh, with our uh, global presence, uh, 29 in Asia and four in Europe and two in North America, our core uh, focus is to support um, foreign businesses who like to tap into the market with our rich expertise and understanding in legal and tax and accounting and human resources or even like technology um, from our on-ground support. Uh, more than 80% countries that we serve, including Switzerland, um, Swiss companies, uh, over 5,000 multinational clients that have already chosen us as well. And our core service competence, including the pre-market entry advisory, including providing updates or like report about the market entry or doing business in one country from the regulatory framework, as well as the tax framework, and also the ease of doing business and the business licensing. Um, and to help you uh, to find the right options uh, to set up uh, in accordance uh, with the company's business objectives uh, in Indonesia or even in other markets uh, through the corporate establishment and business licensing and to support from uh, the back office uh, from the tax, legal, uh, m and and due diligence support, HR payroll, technology and data compliance. On to the next slide, please. This is our uh, presence. Uh, if you, uh, by any change, um, have any uh, questions or would like to get in touch uh, with one of our offices, please feel free to uh, reach out like, to the emails uh, or even to uh, reach out to me, uh, to my email, uh, which will be um, inserted by the end of my presentation. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. Uh, so, um, yeah. Um, Exactly um, one month ago, uh, when I started to receive about the topics that I uh, will deliver, which is about like the doing business in Nusantara through, in Indonesia through Nusantara, as well as like from the incentives part, um, I was uh, just trying to gather information and like to do some research, research um, by just typing like on what are like the fiscal and non-fiscal incentives available for foreign businesses who like to do business in Nusantara. I typed them um, on my search engine and on the first page um, of the website, I saw uh, the authority of the ICANN uh, website there and I click on the link. And when I click on the link, uh, there was like a video on the web page, uh, which provides like a summary um, of like a video uh, summary of like the ease of doing business in Nusantara, what are like the alternatives and like what are like the fiscal and non-fiscal incentives beautifully summarized, which actually helped me to provide like, content, I think, more than like 80% of my presentation today. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, in this opportunity, I will provide like more like an in-depth um, in look uh, based from uh, the review over like the regulatory frameworks that Indonesia already um, enforced law number three, 2022 concerning the Nusantara, uh, followed by a few implementing regulations um, as part of the commitments from the government uh, to support uh, the legal enforcement and uh, the seriousness by the government uh, to really promote promoting uh, the new capital locations um, and the infrastructure and development in Nusantara. And so uh, one of the uh, government regulations uh, specific on the 12th, 2023, provides a very detailed information about the granting of the business permits and the ease of doing business and investment facilities for business players, not only who, who do business in Nusantara, uh, but also some incentives which will be provided for uh, doing business in uh, the partner regions um, as part of like uh, the development of the super hub economies. Next slide, please. So uh, before I uh, begin further, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, two types of entity options here in Indonesia. They're commonly um, used by uh, foreign businesses. Uh, first is the representative office, which one of like the general type of the representative um, offices in Indonesia 
and second is the Foreign Limited Liability Company, or commonly known as PDP and A. So usually, um, every clients that reach out to us and looking like for advisories uh, regarding what would be like the best vehicle or like the best like suitable company, um, if they were like to set up uh, an entity in Indonesia, I will always request them to provide like information about their business intentions uh, because. Um, for instance, like um, by having like a representative office, uh, you will be able to conduct market research activity in the country, as well as like scouting for business and doing marketing activities. And it will be very suitable for a license activities for overseas uh, from the headquarters. Uh, but And also like more importantly, no capital uh, injection will be required in setting up the representative office. Uh, but on the limitations is that this representative office wouldn't be suitable if you plan to uh, generate invoice in the country and like to conduct like commercial activities through the representative office. So um, all of the signing of the sales contract, uh, issuance of the invoice will uh, be directed or uh, will be ideally addressed directly to the headquarters. Um, it would be like a different scenario if you wish like to conduct or operate your business commercially in the country and uh, to issue like any invoices uh, to partake in government tenders and more flexibility to conduct like activities in Indonesia. Uh, we would uh, always recommend uh, to set up like a PTPMA definitely because you will be eligible to receive some, some incentives as well if you're having like an entity in the form of a PTPMA uh, in Indonesia. Um, with a minimum capital of 10 billion rupiah or approximately 640,000 uh, US dollars. Next slide, please. What are like the difference um, if you were to set up an entity, say like a foreign limited liability company outside from the IKN and uh, from uh, or through the Nusantara or uh, IKN? So uh, the process is pretty similar, like all the submissions of the establishment of the PTPMA shall be submitted like, to the online single submission system. Uh, and like some uh, basic business licensing requirements that need to be fulfilled, including the conformity of spatial utilization activity, uh, environmental approvals, as well as building approvals and building function worthiness certificates. And to secure some sectoral uh, business licenses, uh, which risks uh, will be um, categorized and verified uh, by the authority of the ICANN unit. And uh, what's new under uh, this uh, government regulation number 12, 2023, is that specifically, if you were to do like business in the Santara, uh, there will be like some exemption from a foreign ownership limitations uh, for some sectors uh, with the requirement to have a partnership with micro or uh, small and medium enterprises. Next slide, please. Thank you. Now we come to uh, the land rights, um, which are available. So um, now that we, we know that uh, the lanes are in uh, the Nusantara are owned uh, by the government or managed by the uh, authority of ICANN uh, based on the right to manage or uh, quote unquote hak pengelolaan and the government provides um, of some period, uh, which is like the right to cultivate over the right to manage, uh, which will be given uh, for foreign businesses for 95 years in the first cycle and extendable for another cycle of 95 years. And uh, this right uh, will be granted uh, for the first like granting rights for a maximum of 35 years followed by the extension of rights to maximum 25 years and renewable of rights for a maximum 35 years. Well, for the uh, right uh, to build or over the right to manage, uh, which uh, will be suitable uh, for building or even like uh, for an apartment, it will be given for 80 years uh, in the first cycle, um, which um, classified as 30 years uh, for the first uh, right granted and extension of rights to a maximum of 20 years followed by the renewal of rights for a maximum of 30 years 
and it can be extendable for another cycle, which is eight years. Lastly, on the right to use, um, or for, uh, can you please go uh, on the previous slide? On the right to use over the right to manage, it will be it can be given up to eighty years in the first cycle and extendable for another cycle. And uh, for all these rights, uh, the government will closely look at um, the importance uh, for the foreign businesses to really implement and real realize uh, the use of the land, um, either like for the right to cultivate and the right to build it, or even like the right to use. Next slide, please. And on the tax incentives and uh, facilities, uh, the first um, incentives or facilities that are given and what makes it like, different if you were like to purchase land or like building rights uh, through uh, Nusantara is that from the tax rate on land uh, and building rights, uh, which is attached uh, to uh, the buyer outside Nusantara or like, in the general scheme, uh, the total of the uh, price of tax object sales value over the land area will be charged or like will be built with a five percent of the tax rate. And similarly, for the seller side, the income tax on the transfer of land and building rights will be charged with five percent uh, from the total of the price of tax object sales value. So what is exciting and what what's different is that if you were to purchase like a land or like the land rights uh, in Nusantara. Uh, on the case study, like for a land area of like 2,000 meter squares and with a price of tax object va sales value of 1 million rupiah or approximately uh, 58.9 euro and the non-taxable acquisition value, you can save approximately 5,890 5, uh, euro um, as part of the seller's income tax, uh, which you should cover if you were uh, to purchase the land outside from the IKM. And from the buyer side, you will save approximately 5,416 5, uh, 5, um, euro uh, if you were to purchase the land um, in the IKM or Nusantara uh, from the buyer side. Next slide, please. Now we come to the uh, general scheme of the tax holiday. Um, Generally, uh, for all uh, location in Indonesia, like the government through the fiscal uh, Ministry of Fiscal Regulations, provides some sort of like incentives, uh, including like tax holidays for foreign businesses, which is offered to certain sectors and with a minimum investment threshold or approximately of approximately a hundred billion uh, rupiah or a five point nine million euro, and this um investment threshold um, or like this tax holiday is given uh, for a period up to 20 years. But in Nusantara, the government provides uh, a few uh, tax holiday options classified into at least three criteria. Uh, first, for the domestic corporate tax base on certain sectors in Nusantara. Second, for the relocations of the multinational enterprise headquarters or like the regional office. And lastly, for the financial activities in the financial center in Nusantara, with only a minimum threshold of 10 billion rupiah, um, very reduced from uh, the initial minimum threshold, and an increase of the maximum period of up to 30 years. Next slide, please. On to the first uh, classifications for the tax holiday uh, on the dom domestic corporate taxpayer. Uh, assessment based on the strategic value definitely to support the construction and development of the IKM. Classified into three types. Uh, first is the infrastructure and public facility, uh, which will be given to some sectors, including the renewable energy power plant, toll and highways, seaport and airport, clean water supply, education, IT infrastructure, um, residential and office building infrastructure, waste management, as briefly attached by um, our ambassador, public transportation, uh, construction and operations of terminals and constructions and operation of stadiums, uh, sports facilities. So for this infrastructure and public facility, the government offers 100% corporate income tax reduction for up to 30 years. And what makes it more exciting as well, 
for the renewable energy power plant, uh, tow highways and seaport, airport and clean water supply. Uh, this uh, tax holiday will also be given uh, for foreign businesses who like to conduct the infrastructure or operations in the partner regions. Secondly, uh, on the economic revival, uh, that includes the construction and operation of shopping malls, tourism infrastructure and star hotels, uh, meetings, incentives, uh, convention and exhibition facility, and those like EV charging station. Uh, it will be given a tax holiday for up to uh, 20 years with 100% uh, CIT uh, reduction as well. Lastly, on the other business sectors, uh, agriculture and fishery, value adding industry, hardware and software industry, trading activity, construction service, real estate broker and uh, tourism and creative economy. This will also be given 100% corporate income tax reduction for up to 10 years. And specifically for the trading activity, construction service and real estate broker, they must be located in the Nusantara and income derives from business activities in Nusantara. Some requirements uh, that worth to note is that this tax facility application must be submitted before the commercial activities are being carried out or conducted, and the investment realization must be fulfilled maximum two years upon the approval of the tax holiday. Next slide, please. Thank you. Now come to uh, the tax holiday uh, provided for uh, the establishment of relocation and wet headquarter. So um, this uh, tax holiday uh, will be given uh, for uh, MNC uh, who would like to relocate their headquarter or regional office to Nusantara with eligibility criteria. First, uh, minimum two affiliated units and related business entities outside Indonesia. By affiliations, it can be defined as subsidiary, a branch office, or even like a joint venture. Having an economic substance in uh, Nusantara, uh, which can also be defined as managed by its own management, and the state management has sufficient authority to carry out its business activities in Nusantara, and have active uh, business activities as well, other than just receiving income in the form of dividends, uh, interest royalties, and also like profits. And uh, the requirement is to realize the office relocation maximum one year upon the approval of tax holiday facility. And this uh, corporate income tax reduction will be given for 100% uh, for the first 10 years and followed uh, by 50% for uh, the coming 10 years. Next slide, please. Um Jennifer um, Halim, um, due to a bit uh, shortage in time, um, maybe you could just do a quick summary and we will provide the rest of the slides um, to the audience um, with the email um, because we heard that uh, the connection from Agung Vichak Sono is fixed and we could still have a look at the project overall. So if you don't mind, just yeah, giving your contact details and a final statement. Sorry for for shortening. No problem. Yeah, every so. Uh, yeah, maybe I can like uh provide like uh, just like a quick summary that the government really really supported, and uh, I can see that like when I read like the government regulations, there was like some updates like on the tax incentives and like fiscal even like non fiscal facilities in the Nusantara. Uh, so um, it is really like the right change and opportunities for you to really um, have a look at the opportunities in doing business in data. And if you have any questions or like for details, because I haven't had the chance to uh, provide more details about the incentives, but I'd love to provide more details. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not have to reach out to me via email or LinkedIn. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So thank you for the reminder. Thank you, Ms. Salim. Um, thanks a lot for sharing the details, what would it mean like to start a business there? And of course, it's it's very relevant to understand like how would you implement uh, then your um, local um, uh, local uh, services as a Swiss company. And now last but not least, um, we've already heard about the ETH um, and the ETH is since almost 15 years um, active in Singapore with the um, a smart city uh, or future city lab. So um, 
I kindly invite Matthias Niffeler to give us some more insights about how ETH maybe could support you in the Nusantara project. Sure. Uh, good morning or uh, evening to everybody, depending on where you're located. Let me start by sharing my screen right away. Oh, it's visible to everybody. Yes, it is. Uh, so as it was mentioned, I work for the Singapore ETH Center. I'm a researcher here uh, working on a cooling Singapore project. Uh, the Singapore ETH Center is ETH Zurich's only research center outside of Switzerland. Um, and yes, we are, as the name implies, we're located in Singapore. So in this Cooling Singapore project, uh, we collaborate with multiple universities, um, both here locally in Singapore, such as uh, NUS and the Singapore Management University, as well as a few uh, international universities from Cambridge, for example, or uh, MIT and TU Munich. So the motivation of the Cooling Singapore project really lies in sustainability. So much like Nusantara's development, um, we try to make the space as livable and as sustainable as possible for um, residents in a city. Um, one of the important aspects that needs to be considered there is the urban um, heat island effect, which essentially describes how the center of urban development is often much warmer than uh, the surroundings of the city. Uh, studies found that this difference can uh, be as high as seven degrees C uh, for specific hours of the day. And so it's important to uh, in the case of a new development of a city, that you would take this into consideration from the very start. So the solution that we developed for this in the Cooling Singapore project is what we call a digital urban climate twin, or DUCT for short. Uh, this software allows you to analyze urban climate and all of the um, components that influence it. So what you can do with the software is essentially develop what if scenarios, uh, potential future developments that you would like to investigate and see what the effect of those is on climate to ultimately develop climate responsive design guidelines. But I think it's probably best if I directly try and demonstrate this for you. Um, so this duct is a web browser application. It's currently still in uh, closed um, Beta, so it's a, a prototype um, that we use internally and with Singaporean government agencies. And as you come onto this website, you can essentially start a new project here. Obviously, we focus on Singapore as this is the context that we developed this software for. However, if you import new data, um, as I'm going to demonstrate right now, you can essentially adapt this to many different areas in the world. So I'm going to upload the new urban geometry for um, a specific area of Singapore that I'd like to redevelop. And you can see here what these new developments would look like. Um, as well as edit certain small parameters that might be wrong. For example, if you might, if you uh, imported a wrong a wrong feature for one of your buildings, you could adapt that directly here and change the height of the building. For example, um, you can save your changes and then select the zones that you would like to replace in your development. The colors here, by the way, indicate which types these buildings correspond to. Let's call this some new development. 
and you can import it right away. Um, so once you've loaded your new developments, you can go into different analyses that are based um, on these changes to their morphology. So for example, here, sorry, let me reload quickly. We can analyze wind channels. So how does uh, our new development influence the wind in this given region? Um, you can go ahead and run a simulation wind in new development and analyze this. So this would start a physical simulation. It will take quite a while. That's why I'm not going to um, let it run through here, but instead jump directly to pre-computed results for this. So let's say we're in our new urban development here. Um, we're interested in wind corridors for our new urban design. And you can see that the large portion of the wind would flow through this new development. I think, yeah, the general gist of the simulation or of this software is that you can um, essentially investigate new urban developments they would like to introduce into a city. Make them as, yeah, essentially to make your city as livable and as thermally comfortable as you can make it for your new residents. Um, so I see great potential for this in Lucentera and many other locations around the world, really. Thank you very much, um, Matthias, for, for keeping that message very short and, and crispy and clear. Um, thanks a lot for um, everyone for their contributions to the webinar. We have one question um, for Mr. Vichaksono. Um, please, what is foreseen regarding re residue treatment and waste management in Nusantara? Can you say in one or two minutes uh, quickly something about waste management in Nusantara? Yes, certainly. Oh, waste, man waste management is, is something uh, very, very critical. And we see that the potential for waste management is on uh, waste. So because, uh, you know, going toward a net zero uh, city, we see that circular economy is something of uh, an opportunity and also something that can contribute uh, toward the waste management. So uh, we are seeing that the potential of having a system where uh, not just the waste collection, uh, but also processing of the waste toward power generation is uh, one of the opportunity that we offer. Uh, because with regard to renewable energy potential, we have a, a estimate of up to seven gigawatt power supply required for Nusantara by the year 2045. So gradually, of course, we will need a lot of renewable energy supply and waste to energy is a very important uh, possibility for that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vichaksono. Um, one additional question which just came in. Um, is there anything planned about um, a mass transit system like um, for, for public transport? Could you also quickly mention something about this? Yes, uh, Philip, as, uh, as I showed in my presentation, uh, that uh, electric uh, vehicle, electric bus especially, is the first step of this mass transportation. So uh, a bus rapid transit system or a BRT using electric vehicle, electric bus, will be the way to go. But then over time, 
as the population grows, we already have also the master plan. And in fact, by the year 2030, we will start uh, already operating that is the use of the railway. So at first is the rail connection from the airport here in Balikpapan to Nusantara, which of now uh, will take uh, with the toll road about 45 minutes. Yeah. But uh, we aim that using uh, a rail transport, which will be, of course, more environmentally friendly, uh, it's faster and it's also more efficient. That will be the way to go. And further down, of course, creating a network of transportation using rail, bus, as well as other potential will be the strategy in making the city which we aim to be a 10 minute city, you know. So 10 minute city, uh, a clean, net zero, uh, connected also through micro mobility, uh, walkability. So uh, we, we, we will design it uh, uh, in a way that it makes it easy for people uh, to walk. And also even we are aiming at doing uh, a proof of concept at first, but also operation of autonomous vehicle. So for example, autonomous bus. Yeah. And that is uh, our commitment of making Nusantara to be the city for the future. Thank you very much. Um, with this uh, great works, works uh, I would like to close the webinar. I have a few more um, things just to inform you about. First of all, thank you very much for participating in today's webinar, especially to our speakers and our staff in the background um, who made the webinar possible. If you want to meet our local team from Jakarta, this is Maggie and Roshi and our expert for large infrastructure projects here based in Zurich, Patrick Walser, then please join our annual international trade forum taking place on the 23rd of April in Zurich. Uh, this year's motto is sustainability as a driver for growth. So a full fit to uh, Nusantara project. And we are honored to have Councillor Albert Rösti as um, our keynote speaker there. So please register. Um, also, if you want to stay updated about SG's activities, uh, you can become a member and also be able to share with other peers um, about their experience in export markets. And as mentioned before, um, we are thinking of planning a fact-finding mission. Let us know if you would be interested in it. We surely provide you with all the details as soon as we know um, that Swiss companies are interested in joining this. Last but not least, um, the specific projects about, uh, about Nusantara and also about Indonesia in general, you keep on finding on our Go Global cockpit uh, where you can also set yourself an alert and then you stay updated on all the projects. And uh, of course, you can reach out to us if you have any specific questions about the project. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. I look forward to meeting you maybe one day, even in Nusantara. Bye bye and auf Wiedersehen miteinander.